Hello guys, today we are going to compare Infosys versus TCS. What do I mean when I say that I would compare Infosys versus TCS? From a BTEC graduate perspective, I would like to compare the Infosys benefits and the TCS benefits versus the other conditions. So what is the difference between Infosys and TCS? Let's say in terms of eligibility, access, test pattern. We'll talk about in detail about each of these factors. So what all are the factors that in, on, on the basis of which we'll compare TCS and Infosys? Let's see. So our points of discussion today when we'll compare Infosys and TCS will be one is eligibility and accessibility. The second is test, test pattern, which is the most important in the entire discussion. The second most important thing for me is technical preparation that you need to prepare for Infosys or TCS. The third most important point is CAT MBA e litmus issue. So what all this preparation, let's say if I'm preparing for TCS, so whether, would, whether it would help me if I write CAT later on and to what extent. Similarly, if I'm preparing for Infosys, how much it would help me to prepare for CAT or e litmus. I hope all of you are aware about e litmus. Right. And then we'll talk about the other post selection and salary joining internship factors also. So let's move on to the first point of discussion of us. The first point of discussion of us is, is eligibility and accessibility. So TCS, to write a TCS NQT examination, TCS conducts national qualifying test. TCS apna national qualified test karata hai. The eligibility to write this test is 60, 60, 60 percentage. What does that mean? It means in class 10th, you need to have 60 plus percentage. Class 12th, you need to have 60 plus percentage. And in the BTEC till 6th semester, you need to have 60 plus percentage. If you have this score, then only you would be able to write TCS and QT examination. In case of Infosys, it's 60, 60, 65. So 10th, 60 plus. 1260 plus and BTEC till 6 semester or BCA uh, BE till 6 semester is 65 plus. In case of both the companies, no backlogs are allowed at the time of writing the, writing the examination nor at the later point of time at the point of joining also. Now in both these companies, if you have attempted the test and supposedly you are unsuccessful in that attempt, then you won't be allowed to write the examination for these companies in the next six months. So only after the next six months you can again apply these companies. Now the important issue is accessibility. What do I mean when I say access is an issue? Infosys is not accessible to all the campuses in India. Infosys is accessible to only 45 campuses in entire India. So if you are doing BTEC from these campuses then only you would have access to Infosys or if you are lucky then the Infosys conducts a pool campus, then you can write Infosys examination. So these are two modes of access to Infosys. TCS can be accessible, is accessible to all the undergraduates of BTEC who are in the final year or in the third year, let's say, after six semester. So even if you are from a not so known college and you are doing BTEC from there, you would have access to TCS and QT examination. So I can, I think you can compare if you have marks less than 65, more than 60 in BTEC and 60, 60 plus in 10th and 12th, then obviously TCS would be a must, much, or it's the only choice left for you. Second is accessibility. So if Infosys is not accessible to you, then only test left for you among these two is TCS. Okay. Next is test pattern difference, which I said is the most important point of discussion. Now TCS, as I told you, conducts its national qualifying test. It's an international level examination, right? And Infosys conducts it through campus recruitment test. So Infosys comes to the campus, conducts, right, make the students write its test, followed by interview, and that's how the process of Infosys runs. So we'll talk about the difference in the test pattern. So let's talk about now TCS NQT written test. Pattern. So TCS NQT has got quant reasoning programming logic, which is also known as CMCQ section. And the fourth section is coding ability. Quantitative aptitude has got 15 questions over here, which needs to be completed in 30 minutes. English, verbal, 15 questions, 10 minutes. 
programming logic 10 questions 20 minutes coding ability that's the code that you need to write for a problem in the coding section there will be one to two problems and the time allocated would be 30 minutes overall 36 questions and the time allocated is 90 minutes we'll also compare the difficulty level of each of the subsections let's say to what level that i need to prepare quants in the for tcs what all chapter do i need to prepare for quants and similarly verbal and all so we'll come keep on comparing the subsection specific details also next is infosys so infosys test pattern consists of verbal aptitude 40 questions which needs to be done in 35 minutes reasoning aptitude 15 questions in 25 minutes problem solving which is almost same as quantitative aptitude section because it consists of three to four questions of data arrangement and the rest of the seven questions from quantitative aptitude we also call it a quantitative aptitude section but infosys calls the, calls it as problem solving section so it consists of 10 questions which needs to be done in 35 minutes overall 65 questions are there and which need to be done in 95 minutes now let's start comparing each sections so first let's talk about the reasoning aptitude to what extent do i need to learn reasoning if i compare infosys versus tcs infosys if i'm writing info if i belong to an infosys campus then there are five chapters that i need to prepare in the reasoning one is data interpretation which will have five questions there data sufficiency five questions syllogism five questions that also sets the notes of the reasoning section so reasoning section is predictable i will get five questions of di five questions of data sufficiency and five questions of syllogism as i told you in the last slide these 15 questions needs to be done in 25 minutes period of time and i also need to clear the cutoff cutoff for both the companies can be roughly said as 60 percent in case of pieces it can go as low as 50 percent also okay so that's about reasoning aptitude the other questions are data arrangement three this data arrangement three questions will appear in the problem solving section of the infosys and number series one that can also that can also appear it's not a must the number series one question can also appear in the problem solving section of the infosys if i talk about tcs and all these four four or five chapters that i have mentioned for infosys are of level 3 when i say level 3 that means the difficulty level will be on the higher side so for me level 1 is the lowest level 2 is the medium and level 3 is the difficult so if i say about tcs tcs very limited reasoning questions what you can get is one question of puzzle and that's not also that i'm very much sure of and one to two questions of data arrangement so reasoning can be absent also in one in some in some day in the TCS paper or there will be very limited TC reasoning in the TCS paper. Let's talk about the verbal aptitude. If you remember that in the last slide of Infosys test pattern, I said that 40 questions needs to be done in 35 minutes. So Infosys verbal consists of 17 questions of sentence correction, improvement and spotting the errors. It will have theme detection of critical reasoning questions 6, 10 questions of reading comprehension, preposition 5 and jumbled paragraph 2. Infosys verbal section is the toughest of the three sections of Infosys. If I compare Infosys reasoning versus Infosys verbal and Infosys problem solving, the most difficult to clear the cutoff would be Infosys verbal. Hence, the level 3 is there. So, it is almost, it would be correct to say, that if the highest level of verbal is asked in any company, that is in Infosys. Why do they ask so much of verbal aptitude? The basic reason is that the client interaction happens more, much early in Infosys than any other software company. That's the precise reason that they focus on picking up the candidate who has got good marks in verbal aptitude. TCS will have verbal aptitude but a very basic level 3, level 1 prepositions or phrasal verbs that can appear in TCS paper. I said that 15 questions need, that you need to crack in 10 minutes period of time. The level is very basic. So there is a huge difference in the verbal aptitude section if I compare Infosys and TCS. Now let's talk about the quantitative aptitude chapter. 
So if I'm preparing for TCS, I need to prepare all chapters of quantitative aptitude. Any question from any chapter can appear over here. While in case of Infosys, limited chapter of so these chapters are time speed distance, permutation combination, mixture ligation, profit and loss, time and work, number system, and clocks. So these are the chapters that I need to prepare in case for quantitative aptitude in case of Infosys. Now, what does that mean? So, if I summarize this story, if I'm good in verbal section, then most probably Infosys is the best choice for me. If I'm very good at quantitative aptitude, most probably TCS would be the easiest of the entire lot. So, this is one summary. Now, let's talk about the third point of discussion or the second most important point according to me which is technical preparation. How much technically that I need to be prepared for or whether it makes a, makes a case of difference or not, that if I am very good at technical, which company I would be able to crack, that's one thing. Or if I'm very weak in technical, then where are my, where are my, where are my maximum chances? So this is the point of discussion over here. So let's talk about technical preparation. The technical preparation, if I talk about Infosys, the important point is in case of Infosys, I will be exposed technically only to technical interview, which can also be a mixture of technical interview and HR interview. So what I'm trying to say, so if technically I, I want myself to be limited, limited exposed, then Infosys most probably is the right choice for me. Because I will have a technical interview or a char interview or both of them. While in case of TCS, I would be exposed to my technical knowledge thrice. One, while appearing in the CMCQ section in the written test. Second, while writing the coding in the written test. And third, while writing the technical interview. So I would be exposed thrice. Techn technical wise, I will let you know what comes into the CMCQ section where you need to prepare for coding and all this. Let's move on to the next slide. So technical test or any technique or it's not only but relevant to TCS about it's relevant to Quipro also it's relevant to Capgemini also. So technical test will have questions from these subjects data structure C, C++, DBMS, Core, Java, Networking, OS, OOPS and Software Engineering. Next is technical interview. Obviously, we'll have the similar subjects. And now programming will become come, programming can be C, C, Python, any language that you can ask to write the code. So this is the difference. So again, if I if I summarize, I'm very good at verbal, then in fee, Infosys would be a better choice for me. While the, and if I'm technically weak and I'm my verbal is good and my quant and reasoning are okay, most probably Infosys is the choice. If my quant and technical is good or very good, then my choice would be TCS. So that's the variation in terms of preparation. Next is from the futuristic angle. So if I focus myself only on one company, I should not do that. But if I focus only on one company, which of these two companies would benefit me more from the futuristic perspective? If I decide to write CAT e litmus or any other MBA interest test later on. I believe all of you understand e litmus is an open-ended examination where any person can write the test and all mo very good startup companies that is the leading companies like Samsung and all take up the e litmus score. So that's why people prepare for e litmus. e litmus paper pattern is almost same as CAT. It's a younger brother of CAT, right? So e litmus and CAT they have level three quant reasoning and verbal. So if I'm preparing for CAT, most probably Infosys would help me out better. Why? Because Infosys paper has got reading comprehension. More than 50% of the paper of the CAT has got reading comprehension. Hence, Infosys would be better. So if you ask me genuinely, there's a better chance for, a, for an Infosys campus student to crack Infi as well as CAT in comparison to a TCS campus student. Again, it's 
the chances are better for an infi campus student to crack Infosys, Elitmus and CAT and the chances are less for a TCS campus student. Why? Because the focus would be on verbal. That does not mean that a student who is preparing only for TCS will not be able to write CAT. Obviously, he needs to work hard. So, the Test pattern is similar, hence a student who is preparing for Infosys will have a little better chance to crack Eritmus and CAT. Though any student from anywhere can prepare for TCS and ha can have good verbal score also, that's also a possibility. So the advantage in terms of, so Infosys student will have verbal advantage for CAT and Eritmus. Infosys student will also have advantage in case of reasoning and TCS candidate will have advantage in quant section. I hope you understand the point. Next in the last point of the discussion is salary, post selection, internship and all. The salary in case of Infosys is 3.25 for BTEC and 3.5 for MTech graduates. While in case of TCS, it's 3.5 for Ninja candidates and 7.2 for digital candidates. The students who score who are among the top 10 percentile of the TCS in QT are given an option for TCS digital. That does not mean that Infosys is not giving higher package than 3.5. Infosys gives the higher package, but that's through Infi TQ or Hack with Infi program. Right? But TCS in QT, since it gives the choice of TCS Ninja and TCS Digital through the written test, hence we have written over here. The TCS in QT you can get into 3.5 Ninja or 7.2 package through digital profile of TCS. Now, in, in terms of client interface, as, as I said earlier also, Infosys candidates will have client interface earlier in their career in comparison to TCS. Okay. That's why they ask verbal so much and to, to level 3 also. The TCS uh, if I compare TCS and Infosys, most probably TCS guys would give you early joining in comparison to T Infosys. Because the numbers of TCS are huge and the demand is also huge. And hence, they would hire you as early as possible. Now, there's a summer internship. So, in some of the universities, summer internship happens for the 8th semester. Infosys. So, if you are an Infosys selected candidate, then there's a possibility of going for a summer internship thing in the 8th semester with Infosys. So TCS never provides any summer internship for the 8th semester students. But while, while for the TCS in the 8th semester what you would be doing, you would be writing and you would be going through an online training module of TCS where they would train you and will keep on asking you, will have learning and testing modules that you need to go through. Right? TCS the position that they say is known as systems engineer, that the position that you get from Infosys. TCS is a multi-function thing. So it depends upon whether you get a ninja profile or a digital profile. Hence the patient would also vary. Right. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching the show.